as i said the predictions can be in three types one could be the simulation based predictions then it could be the information or data based predictions or the third category could be the qualitative or quantitative based predictions so let's first start with the simulation based predictions and what simulation tools are available in autodesk software so the autodesk software software uh, has a multiple simulation based predictions they could be the autodesk insight or autodesk autodesk cfd or autodesk robo structural analysis or autodesk dynamo or autodesk navis works so when we uh, think of these multiple simulation based prediction analysis tool that's available in the market so let's learn who can use these uh, who can use these uh, simulation uh, tools to make better uh, judgment decisions on their project so obviously these uh, specific tools serve their own different purpose let's learn uh, each uh, software tool in in like particular or what purpose they serve yeah first uh, simulation tool that's available is autodesk insight as you can see autodesk insight is used by most commonly by architects design engineers and mechanical engineers so what is this uh, software tool is most commonly used for uh, we use Autodesk Insight to make predictions on energy efficiency of buildings. So we make use of it to make sure that we design energy efficient buildings and we make sure that we reduce the carbon footprint of the construction process and we aim for sustainable design of buildings. So this could go with material choices and how what is the quantity of the materials used in the project and how, how are we estimating these materials and what are the uh, how is the how does this material compare to in terms of energy so we can use concrete and then we use timber and then we compare uh, what material helps us in conserving energy or material helps us in making the building energy efficient and then we make the predictions so this uh, software tool is helps us making the simulation based decisions on energy efficiency of buildings that helps us in concentrating on sustainable design so the next uh, simulation tool available uh, in market to help us make the prediction or decisions is Autodesk CFD. So Autodesk CFD, as you might have predicted, is used by mechanical engineers, fluid or hydraulic design engineers. So it's basically related to do with fluids and it's most commonly categorizing fluid flow and design HVAC in building models. So uh, commonly we use uh, fluid uh, for example, in uh, buildings, we have to design certain times the fluid flow or the HVAC ventilation, air conditioning. They are treated as fluids and then their flow is uh, simulated in Autodesk CFT by mechanical or hydraulic design engineers. So it helps us in making predictions or collecting data from previous project to uh, replicate or improvise the decisions in the uh, current or future project. And then comes the uh, important or analysis tool called the Autodesk Robo Structure Analysis. The Robo Structure Analysis is a structural analysis tool that helps us in performing the analysis of the structure. So it's most commonly used by civil engineers and structural design engineers. So the most uh, it helps us in making analysis and predict the building behavior for example if you are designing a high rise buildings this robo structure analysis tool or the model or concept you create in the revit you, you can transfer it to the simulation tool called robo structure analysis and you can use it to make uh, let's say the uh, predictions on how the building behaves to the loads that applied and how can you parameterize these loads that's applied on the structure uh, to make better efficient judgment on how can you design these buildings for example the later uh, the next slide we will be discussing about autodesk dynamo which is the parametric design software tool that help that is a most important feature associated with uh, building information modeling uh, parametric design is nothing but uh, we make the design in terms of parameter. So for example, if you uh, make, uh, for example, let's go back to Autodesk Insight, wherein you're making decisions on the energy efficiency of buildings. Let's say uh, using Dynamo, you can create a parameter called materials and you can associate, uh, like associate multiple options to it. For example, one option could be concrete. The next option could be timber. The next option could be steel. 
So you don't have to carry out the same design multiple times. So once you have carried out a uh, design, you can change these options to see how your results differ uh, based on your parameter changes. So your parameter is material. So once your parameter of material changes, the energy efficiency associated with the building changes. So that's the result parameter called energy efficiency. So Autodesk Dynamo combines the input parameters. It process the uh, model and then uh, gives you the output information. So you can play with multiple options to give you multiple outputs. So it is like uh, a one design, but you have multiple uh, efficient designs associated with the current project. For example, for a one particular shape that you can think of a high rise building, you can uh, propose a thousand different configurations of materials, structural materials, or uh, beams or columns and uh, the analysis force, uh, force members, deflections, all those uh, uh, technical uh, related terms to qualitative terms such as energy and then cost, budget, time, all the quantity and quality related parameters can be combined together in this software simulation tool called Dynamo. So uh, Dynamo is used by architects, designers, engineers throughout across. It serves the uh, 360 degree perspective. And then we use it mostly to perform uh, parametric design and then improvise our few current project to uh, make help us make predictions for the future project. Yeah. So. Uh, what are the predictions that we can make? So although the uh, technical software tools offer us uh, multiple perspective or simulation tools that are really cool to use that offers predictions or uh, judgments. So we also need to use our uh, own qualitative judgments in order to make predictions for the future project. So what are the realistic predictions that we can gather using these simulation tools that we discussed in the previous slides? These simulation tools help us in understanding the behavior of the buildings, the current buildings. So we it helps us in uh, targeting towards sustainable design, it makes us better choice of materials and then help us target towards sustainable design. So let me present to you a situation. For example, all of all for now, we have been discussing uh, each software as the a uh, single individual uh, concept. So for example, in order to do energy efficiency, we did uh, Autodesk uh, Insight. To do structural analysis, we did robust structural analysis. To do combine them uh, to play with parameters or improvise the design, we went for Autodesk Dynamo. So how can we combine all these simulation tools to help us make a better judgment on a future project? So for example, let's say uh, replacing uh, timber with concrete or uh, uh, timber with concrete, special kind of timber with concrete helps you uh, in improving the sustainability of the uh, building that you are constructing. Let's say it could be a, a residential structure or a ground, right? Ground, uh, it's a one story structure that could be constructed of timber. So you are replacing timber with concrete to promote sustainable design. But then you go back to the budget or cost associated with the project. So when you go with the cost or uh, budget associated with the project, you see that when you replace timber with uh, concrete, the budget of the project is exceeded by 10 to 12%, which you cannot afford. So you need to make a decision on what are you going to compromise? Are you going to compromise on sustainability of design or are you going to compromise on uh, like the concrete and timber for cost? So these are all uh, decisions that so for example, if you have a previous project that has overfund, like you met, you were uh, under budget and you had enough profit from previous project that you are willing to compromise for the current one. So you can go for, uh, let's say like, you're willing to compromise for project, which uh, like it's a rare scenario. Uh, like if you're willing to compromise for project, you replace timber with concrete, sorry, you replace concrete with timber in the current pro in the future project to improve sustainability in design. But these, integrated decision have, does not uh, like involve one person. It goes through multiple levels. These decisions are uh, either taken by executives or BIM managers or people who are overviewing the progress in the project. But the simulation based predictions are carried out by people or uh, associates or executives who are working on the project. So we need a platform or a tool that helps us in combining these uh, multiple people people associated in multiple levels who can mingle and come together in one platform 
and help make one particular decision for the future project. So uh, that categorized for the interdiscipline coordination. For example, interdiscipline coordination could also mean uh, like when you are constructing the high rise buildings, uh, it could involve people from electrical discipline, mechanical discipline, uh, they could their uh, elements could contradict each other in a particular location. So one must have to relocate their uh, ducts or one might have to relocate their conduits to make sure that there is no clash or there is enough clearance available in the structure material that's provided. So the interdiscipline coordination plays a major role uh, when we are using these simulation based prediction tools. And then it helps us in promoting the efficient design. So when we make all these uh, simulation related predictions, it uh, helps us target or focus towards the efficient design. So efficient design is promoted by parametric design optimization that we discussed using Dynamo. So for example, we also discussed using the concept when we change the material, we can see the energy efficiency associated with the building that automatically gets revised. So we, we have a picture of what happens with uh, replacing the material or what happens when this particular task uh, gets more pr priority over the other. So we perform the parametric design. So one uh, important topic that we might learn is the parametric uh, design is associated with the concept of weights. So when we discuss the uh, example of replacing concrete with timber and then it's being compromised with uh, su sustainable design or the cost or budget of the project, we can, as a project manager, we can asso associate weights that's uh, related to the each individual terminology in this future project. We can uh, associate certain weight to the concept of uh, sustainable design, associate certain weight to cost, certain weight to the time, and then uh, certain uh, weight associated to the material procurement. So when you perform the combined, uh, when you uh, take the project as a whole and perform analysis, the parametric design issues the uh, wise or judgmental uh, choice that you can make for a project. So efficiently we are uh, trying to make cost savings the target of the project is to meet the schedule and to save as much as cost possible with all the constraints that are set to meet we meet the quality we meet the safety uh, for safety uh, related concepts for the project we issue all the deliverables with perfect quality and then all these should be attained within the perfect time and cost uh, associated or fixed for the project so when we uh, think of project, what is a project data or what is the technology, like technical, technically what we can think of the term project data. So as we have uh, like uh, discussed uh, so much on uh, general information, technical specification and other data. So I would like to take a small pass and then uh, hear from you on what's your understanding about uh, what's the project data. So you can probably like few of you, if you're interested, you can comment in the chat box or what's the understanding of project data or technically what do you understand by project data associated with a future project or current project? Uh, hello, Nageshwari. Yeah, yeah, Girish. Yeah, I, I'm not able to see the chat screen. So it, has it been turned off for me? No, 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 no. You can actually like chat screen. I can see the chat screen in your, in your. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it just, uh, I can just see you, but uh, it doesn't go to the main window. Can you close it? Can you comment it? I think like you can actually chat only to us, to the host. Okay, sorry. Yeah, then it's uh, perfectly fine. Uh, probably then I can uh, continue with my presentation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did my screen come back? Yes. Okay. So uh, technically the term project data uh, could be categorized into, we can place it under multiple categories. So we can place certain project data under concept design or equipment or machinery related to carry out the project, or it could be the resources associated with completing the project. And uh, what's the planning or planning related data associated with the project and books and online or documented source of data associated with the project. So when we think of design, uh, the BIM model, comes under the concept and design phase of project data. So when we uh, 
organize the project, the first uh, initiation of concept, we design the BIM model. We uh, multiple disciplines come together. They sit uh, like they make decisions on what's the configuration of the structure is going to be, how much they are going to build, and what's the material they are going to use, and how are they going to uh, procure those materials. All those concept conceptual decisions are made in the BIM model, and we create a uh, conceptual drawings that's going con, it's not con, it's the drawings that are to be executed on field for construction so we have the bim model and cad drawings in the design data that we have uh, in form of documents so once the, the design data is uh, completed so we have understanding of the schedule the time because we have the material and procurement concept and everything uh, written down in the design data. So once we have that, we have an understanding of the time and cost. So we need to, the next phase is to uh, equipment or mechanical tools that are required in to complete the project. So the equipment related data could be the data specifications and how are we going to procure those equipments and what are the efficiency of those uh, necessary tools and can we from the, pre these are all decisions that we can make from the previous projects. For example, if we uh, for uh, any project, we need to start by excavating the ground. So if you have already done an excavation job on your previous project and it, you feel that your engineering judgment feels that the project has cost way more on the execution and you feel that for your future project, you can cut down the cost on uh, the excavator and the job of execution. You use those previous data or you uh, like you started, you start reaching out to multiple people instead of reaching out to one particular person for a job. You start reaching out to multiple people, issuing a tender or bid to see who can complete the job in a uh, like least cost and efficient way possible. And then you uh, ish, uh, like work as a contract with them to help you complete the excavation job in the uh, like short period of time or in an efficient manner. So we. Uh, like these equipment related data could be the data specifications or performance. So we make decisions based on the performance and efficiency. So that once we have finished the mechanical tool related part of the data, then it comes with the in-person data or human related uh, resource that are required to complete the project. Any project, it's always like if you think of a, a high rise building or construction project, it involves like way more than 100, 200, 300 people they are, uh, who are involved in the project, starting from the concept phase to the final phase where it's executed. So there is a planner, there is one who estimates budget, there is one who uh, creates the design, there is one who analyzes the structure, there's one who makes decision on materials, there's one who requests materials, and then there's a team who uh, like starts constructing the building, there is an uh, like, like team of people who are in the construction, then you have uh, people like the architects or the people who create the five finishing layout and electrical engineers and plumbing engineers who like they come together and uh, they start fitting the mechanical conduits around the buildings. And then uh, once the building is uh, complete, you need uh, the people who start to like release the project for use of public or commercial uh, like if it is for commercial use, they have to release to the commercial. So you need to start uh, acquiring permits or you need to start acquiring permissions for the building to be on that site. Uh, like let's say the, for uh, to be occupied by people, then there are third party people who inspect if the building is carried out, if it is constructed following the safety and quality norms, there are quality inspectors. So like it takes uh, like vast, uh, like it, it's like, a, we, we call it that's like a, almost uh, there's a proverb in Tamil which could translate to uh, like in order to uh, pull a chari chariot, you, you need to bring a whole village or whole city to do that. So in order to carry out a vast construction project or vast uh, design project, you need to bring almost like 200, 300, 400 people to complete this uh, particular project. So this is the uh, human uh, part of the like human part of the project. So we have the uh, resource uh, related with project. So whenever we have a uh, resource related, uh, they have experiences from the previous and current projects. And uh, these data could be uh, like transferred in form of knowledge or coordination. So we can document those data in form of knowledge or we can document them as uh, coordination. Just we can take this uh, oral information and make sure that we implement in the future project instead of documenting it. 
so in later uh, slides we will see what are the better practices that we might need to follow in order to make uh, better or wise judgments or future predictions for the project so any project the first phase after concept is planning so whenever we start planning for the project the data associated with planning could be creating the schedule or managing the resources so how many skilled labors you require how many non skilled like uh, labors you require to complete the project and what are the labor charges associated with the project and how much uh, other direct costs are associated with the project so you need to manage the resource so that uh, we meet the project deadlines and the next important category with planning is we need to plan for risks so prediction the 100% like if you say prediction is 100% 80 to 90% is covered in the planning phase so we start making predictions for the future project in the planning phase so how are we going to make these predictions although we have all those simulation or computation tools we have the books and vast online informations that is available to us to make a better judgment so we have these uh, resources in in terms of handbooks or contract documents or quality documents from previous projects or reports that are issued and then we have online information uh, like whenever we go to uh, any like for any uh, technical uh, difficulty that we ex ex experience in day to day life we go to online and then look for any solution that's available or that's already been done so for example what we are doing is we are not doing prediction but once we encounter a situation we go for uh, like online information to look for the solution. So there is someone So we can look at it this way. So when we run into risk There is someone who has already documented the solution online, which we can go back and refer to so that we can uh, Resolve the issue that we face in an efficient manner So like making predictions for project is also like something similar to this like to go back to online information to uh, Like resolve our issue like to the problems that we face Yeah so as you can see the data that are associated with the project why we call them big data so we uh, saw all those uh, data can be pictures images videos so let's say the project a has 60 gb worth data it has plans documents images videos audio files and then uh, site presentation videos and then uh, coordination uh, mails between the uh, interdiscipline and then talks and uh, lectures documented lessons learned so all this like come around 60 gb and then we have project b project c project d project e so multiple projects they have like vast gbs of data so which are stored for a let's say like we don't use any of the building information modeling tool to help us make the predictions we have them as form of excels or uh, raw images or we have uh, like like we don't we don't combine those data so they are going to be as so what you need to do is you might need to depend on one particular person and one particular person's memory power to remember where what data is stored for example if uh, like all how much ever your memory power might be good you might tend to forget certain details when you are making predictions for your current or future project so let's say like you have images for project A, but you're looking for the current image in project E. You might take way more time in locating those images through your uh, vast GBs of data. You, it might like make your uh, predictions in inefficient time. It will increase your time. It will increase the cost. It's going to be a inefficient model of predictions. So what we do is we combine all these predict all these data and we whenever we are going to make predictions for the future project let's say we have a future project that has information worth 280 gb so we are going to look at all the 280 gb in an efficient manner so let's look at how building information modeling provides us a tool and what like technical concept that it is based upon to help us make the better predictions so as you can see we in the previous slide we saw that there are like vast amount of data let's say like 280 GB for the future project so this data could come under two categories there could be data that are useful for our project and there are data that could be unuseful for the project so uh, all we need is to use only the useful data so what we will do what or the building information modeling tool will do is help us omit the unuseful data so instead of us looking as manually through data categorizing it as useful or unuseful 
it has an automatic algorithm based on the keywords or based on the topic that you search to categorize the useful data and unuseful data associated with the project. So once you uh, just segregate the useful data for the project, you can start determining patterns associated with the project. So you can start making graphs, charts, associate like cost, number of projects, per time that could increase tasks per time and what is the uh, like average time that it takes to complete the task and what are the nature related hazards that cause delay in time and how can we uh, like if you want to finish the project early which particular task we can uh, finish fast or which one we can start late and we can which one we can start first all these determ like determinations or patterns we can um, gather these uh, predictions based on the clean data so once we have determined the pattern we like we turn this pattern into results so in order to turn the data into results like we discussed in our previous slide where the data is transferred to results based on processing or modeling the first thing we discussed was simulation based building information modeling tools this is also a kind of simulation tools but uh, we use uh, more like more information and data based simulation so instead of doing the technical analysis like uh, for example, building structure analysis or fluid flow analysis, doing the uh, parametric design optimization for the cost or budget. We are going to combine all these uh, decisions or all these data into results based on three particular concepts. It could be the most familiar concepts to you. Uh, they are the artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. So I assume everyone like uh, could be the tech enthusiasts like us or the people who are in the young age, we can, we are like well aware of these evolving concepts called artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then deep uh, learning that's coming up and all the project, uh, like how it is uh, striving or making the way or how it is booming in construction industry or how it is revolutionizing the construction industry. So we let's uh, discuss the first concept, artificial intelligence. So as the term indicates, it's an artificial intelligence. It's like, it's not like intelligence of human being. It's the way the computer thinks or the intelligence of the machines or computer. So how, how does artificial intelligence play a role in construction industry? So as we know, the purpose of a project or the, the purpose we make predictions for the project is to meet the project schedule and make a like project uh, like we like earn as much profit on the project as possible. So uh, artificial intelligence help us in uh, like forcing the risk or uh, predicting data from the past and help us in uh, avoiding or mitigating the risk and what are the material like like what are the risks that could associate related to cost and time and help us make those decisions based on the previously like identified algorithms and uh, it like gives us those predictions based on wise and technical uh, algorithm results so that like you have a efficient cost for the project and efficient by a schedule that you need to meet for the project. So this particular feature is incorporated in the tool called BIM 360 that we will be discussing in uh, the further slides. The other concept is machine learning. Machine learning is nothing but like we are developing algorithms. Machine learning in uh, like simple terms, like I do not know like in depth of what uh, goes behind, uh, like for example, I know like the data is transferred to results and how can you transfer the data to results and how can you uh, like believe these results or like if for example, if you uh, process data into BIM 360 and you receive results, I can help you see through what are the, like if the results make sense or if the results are like over promising so we can make those qualitative uh, decisions, but the algorithms and the technical uh, software feature uh, that runs behind BIM 360, the artificial intelligence and machine learning, I can like I can explain to you in terms of the simple terms that I I, I have understood. So machine learning is like these developing algorithms. So you use the current existing data to make future predictions. So that's the basic fundamental of prediction analysis that we have been uh, like looking at from the initial slides. So we have uh, data, we, need, we have results. So how are we going to integrate data to results? So the data, as we saw, we have images and videos. So the first software, like whenever you think of a software tool, it needs to combine the image and video data to results. So 
along with image and video data, it also needs to combine the experience, communication and technical know-how from the resource and the lesson learned. And it needs to uh, gather information from the written documents, spreadsheets and contracts. So we have all these informations, uh, like variety of informations that are come that come under project data. So what we are going to do is we need to look at a software tool that helps us in combining the variety of data or integrating the different categories of data to results. So the efficient software or efficient tool that we can look at should be one that combines different or integrates different categories of data to provide us or predict to help us predict the results. So that particular uh, software tool is BIM 360. So BIM 360, as you can think of, it's like a 360 degree, uh, like it could be used from people who are involved in the project management or who are involved in the construction phase of the project or who are involved in the dis design phase of the project. So it's, as you can see, this is where you make a uh, design simulation based predictions and then construction. You have the technical know-how. So you have all those uh, information and database predictions. So for example, if you look at people who have already been constructing so many buildings, like due to sheer technical know-how, they can make predictions on how long it will take to construct this particular building. So they don't need uh, Excel sheet data or though need, they need these uh, tools to make the exact decision. They can make preliminary decisions based on their technical know-how. So this is where you can see BIM 360 is a software tool where we combine the simulation based decisions, information based decisions and quantitative and qualitative based decisions to make one combined or 360 degree uh, wholesome predictions for a future project. So what are the advantages of using a BIM 360? So BIM 360 helps us in providing the wholesome like overall results for overall predictions for the project. And it helps us in avoiding the mistakes that are committed in the past and helps us in avoid or mitigating the risks uh, associated with the future project. And uh, it proposed like, or it comes up with multiple options to complete the same project. So we have the parametric design part taken care of. So the features associated with BIM 360, like that, like uh, on a ground, like let's say the basic features, if you can think of, we use it to plan and manage the technical resources. So the resource management is taken care of. We manage time and costs. So the schedule and budget related management is taken care of in BIM 360. And we make sure that we meet the quality standards and manage and mitigate risks. They are the ultimate goal or scope of projects. And to in order to do all these things, BIM 360 is a real-time uh, tracker or real-time uh, performance tracker of the project. For example, let's say like if you don't have a software tool, simulation tool, like a BIM 360, so you might have to rely on communication methods like uh, email, telephone to convey or communicate the project or progress of the project to the people who are overlooking the or who are uh, executives or BIM managers who are overseeing the project uh, execution. So like, let's say we don't have a tool like this. So what, what was, what could be the scenario? So you need to communicate as a design engineer, you need to communicate your progress. And then there will be like some other uh, discipline who communicate their progress. And there could be a halt or delay in project from some other discipline. So there is like one couldn't like put together all the charts together to understand where he stands in the project completion task. So with BIM 360, so everyone can uh, log in their task and what they have completed. So we can calculate how much like what's the percentage of project that's completed and are we behind schedule or are we ahead of schedule or, or like are we and within the budget or are we ahead of the budget or can we like what's the efficiency of like carrying out this project task so all these information are provided to you in a single dashboard so you don't have to look through like 50 different excel file to gather information it is like provided to you in a dashboard and you can just you can, there are like mobile based applications available for the BIM 360 tools so that like you can even like, uh, 
you can you don't even have to open your computer you can just open your phone and check the progress of the project and like track the issues you can like if let's say like there is a there is a project that's uh, carried out across different time zones there is a project that's carried out in india that's been overlooked in dubai or it's in oman or it's in uh, usa uh, obviously the time zone differed so for example if there is a issue that arises in the later hours there is a real time issue tracker so i can be aware of the issue that's arisen that's that arise or like that has come up in the project and what can be uh, the solutions to the risk based on the previous data that's the tool the, for example for example in the future project that's that has uh, 280 gb worth data that we discussed in the example if we have to make any predictions for the issue that we face there are like real time issue uh, trackers and solutions available based on the previous data and we can make wise decisions based on those uh, solutions that we receive so this uh, particular all these concepts is carried out we call it as construction iq uh, construction iq is a like the feature in bim 360 and it uses ml algorithms uh, to complete or help us to transfer the data into insights for the future project it it is the better or fast way to help us track the issues that requires attention for a particular project so as you can see what why, why are we doing all this prediction analysis so we target some results so what are the results that you could that you could uh, think of prediction analysis it helps you meet quality standards that's the ultimate goal of the pro like quality standards like you need to meet quality standards for the project and then it helps you avoid safety related hazards uh, you can uh, predict what are the safety hazards from the previous project and make sure that you implement the lessons learned for your future projects and then you meet the cost and project budget for the project and then uh, estimates you don't run out of time you make sure that all the tasks are completed on time or in case if you know that this particular task in the previous project has caused so much trouble you uh, like schedule more time to that particular task or give sufficient gap so that you are not surprised when issues or uh, risks arise when completing the project and you predict some natural hazard patterns such as cyclone storm rainfall and then you like like allocate time and cost for uh, problems that could arise because of these natural hazards and then you plan your project cost and budget with respect to the decisions from the previous project so overall all these results combined together you can target for efficient and optimum design for the future project which is the uh, like ultimate goal that your client might expect out of you so as you have as you can see like uh, the purpose of taking any course could be like you might be interested in what like what are the uh, like purpose of taking a, a certified course on project uh, let's say the prediction analysis using revit structures so as i said uh, prediction analysis brings together multiple discipline engineers so as a design engineer if you are a structural or civil design engineer you work with architects site engineers electrical engineers mechanical engineers and then project managers to communicate the simulation based predictions and you also get to be part of uh, the bim 360 so that you can make the quantitative or information or data based predictions uh, to make a uh, future project design recommendations so if you are a site engineer so you use still use bim 360 and then you can um, track the construction related issues for example this is a, a live online uh, database for any issue that you could run into a, a construction let's say like you are working on a high rise building or a mechanical equipment you ran out of drill equipment you are looking for uh, procuring where to procure like it could be a special equipment so you need to procure that particular equipment in a short period of time so if you could properly locate the keyword and if you have already recorded your lessons learned from the previous project you can obviously track those information and make sure of that particular information to make better decisions for your future project so as you can see like uh, human the like human resources for a particular project can be the same or it differs for a different project so like it is rather impossible or uh, like highly impossible to one person transfer all information to another one person or like like you can't combine information from multiple people uh, 
without a simulation tool like BIM 360. So as a site engineer, this could be a live database for you to track the progress of the project. So mechanical or HVAC engineer. So like you can make simulation based decisions based on uh, Autodesk, Autodesk CFD, or uh, you can use Autodesk Dynamo to help in improvising the design. And it, it kind uh, or also like when you're executing these tasks on the field, you can uh, relate to the field related issues or uh, track all the issues that come up on real time based on the BIM 360 application to make uh, wise and judgmental decisions. And then as an architect, it helps you in creating a better concept and design. So for example, if you know a particular concept didn't work last time, or it created so many uh, revisions or uh, uh, coordination between multiple disciplines, you can make wise decision on how your concept can be improved so that you, you involve, um, let's say like not much complication and avoid uh, too many uh, clashes between interdiscipline. So as a, uh, like, this particular uh, prediction analysis could be used by people along among like along like multiple disciplines. So like it is to it is generally like whoever who is working on a project, they need prediction analysis to mitigate risk to uh, meet the project budget and like to like meet the project within the scheduled time. So this this is a like uh, like task or this is a software that we can learn so that like when you uh, like grow up in your career as a project manager or you overlook a construction activity or project activity you can use a, like you can make a better use of this tool to make decisions for your project it like there are like tools developed for you that improve your decision uh, like so that like you can obviously shine better and like use the better judgments instead of like looking for yourself and then making a raw based on a raw data that's available you're going to use a process data to make decisions which is always better than the previous one